this video will give you an overview of Endless Studio. Endless is a cloud-connected, multi-track looper that is designed to keep you in a creative, fast-moving flow, or to just jam freely by yourself or with friends and strangers live over the internet. Endless Studio is now available on Mac OS as a standalone or plugin, as well as Endless for iOS, which launched earlier this year. Let's take a look at the main interface of Endless. On the left, we can find the Instruments and Preset Browser. For each category of drums, notes and bass, you'll find sound packs for different sorts of flavors and genres. We can also find the built-in sampler, built-in effects, and a way to route audio into Endless using your built-in microphone, audio interface or DAW. In the lower right, we can find the play area. You can play the pads directly in the interface, or of course using your MIDI controller, be it a keyboard, pad controller, or other sort of MIDI input. To its left, we can see an audio waveform traveling through the retrospective looper. It is always listening and recording what we're playing into it. Below, you can see the macro knobs, which help us sculpt and morph the sound while we're playing it. Above the looper, we can find the mixer, which houses the individual channels, or as we call them, layers. To its right, there are some settings for key, scale, BPM and time signature. And the row of circles above that is a history of the most recent riffs in this jam. We'll take a closer look at riffs and layers in a little bit. At the very top, we find some global settings for quantize and the metronome. At the heart of the Endless workflow is the retrospective looper. Its main feature is that it's always listening and always recording. So compared to other more traditional working loopers, you don't have to pressure yourself to deliver the perfect take only after hitting the record button. Instead, try things out for as long as you want and then capture the last one, two, four or eight bars of audio. Doing this has created a new layer with the drums that were played. Let's add some percussion in the same way. I have mapped some buttons on my MIDI controller to the four segments of the looper and will now capture the last two bars of audio. And yet another layer has been created. Rather than having dedicated channels for certain instruments or types of sounds, in Endless, anything you play simply creates a new layer. Just pick the sound that you want to play next, use the macro knobs to sculpt the sound further while you're playing, and once you're happy with what you've played, capture it into a new layer. Endless also comes with a traditional punch in and out looper that will also let you create some interesting syncopated rhythms. As we've seen while recording some sounds using the retrospective looper, we didn't really do any overdubbing, rather we just kept creating new layers in what we are calling a riff. Using the mixer, you can activate or mute individual layers. Or use the faders to adjust the volume. But a riff is more than just the sum of its audio. It also contains information about the key and scale that you're in, which is useful when you're playing the built-in sounds using the pads, because they will adjust to the key and the scale that you've selected. Also saved within a riff is the tempo. You can adjust the BPM in semitone steps, which will assure that you always stay in a well-tuned key. Last but not least, the time signature is also part of a riff. So a riff is kind of like a snapshot of what is currently in the looper. And we can create a new snapshot at any time using this button, but most importantly, it happens automatically when you add a new layer or remix a layer. With a few clicks, we can browse back through the history and retrace our steps, how we added the synth and the drums on top of what we started with. A more extensive riff history can be browsed on the left. From the effects category, let's start with a simple low pass filter. My target is going to be the synth layer. You can now see the audio streaming through the effect back into the looper. Now I can start playing around with the filter. The effects within Endless are designed to be interacted with, rather than using them in a set and forget manner. 
In a way, we treat effects just like instruments. So like we did with the drums and the synth earlier, we capture the audio with the looper. This time, instead of adding a new layer, the targeted layer has been overdubbed with the low-passed audio. You can use an effect on more than one layer at a time. Simply target multiple layers and they will be summed together. Let's apply some bit crusher to these drum layers. Take a look at the two drum layers in the mixer once I've captured the loop. They have merged into one. When targeting multiple layers together, you're creating something like a group bus in a traditional DAW. You can use this technique to merge and glue layers together into one unit. If that isn't what you wanted to do, just take a step back in the riff history and return to the original layers. Of course, you can record external sounds into Endless. Since Endless Studio also comes with a VST3 and AU plugin, you can just integrate it into your typical DAW or project. Here I am playing a VST synth, trying to find a nice pattern with the arpeggiator. And then, once I'm happy, I simply loop it. And then I also have a short vocal clip in my session that I can quickly record into Endless in the same way. This might be a good moment to take a look at the built-in sampler. Simply target a layer, record a short snippet into the sampler, and then immediately play it back using the pads, the MIDI controller, just like we did with the instruments earlier. And while we are in our DAW, let's take a look at how we can take stuff out of Endless in a matter of seconds. Simply drag a riff out of Endless, and it will expand into its individual layers. These can be dropped into a folder or directly into your DAW. The file names contain information about who created the layer, which instrument or effect they used, at which tempo and in which key. Once you've gone through the jam and collected all the interesting samples, you can quickly arrange them into a song. Endless is all about helping you turn your imagination into music. And to do that even better, you can map your MIDI controllers to all the individual functions of Endless, like the looper, the mixer settings and the macronobs. You can also quickly switch between instrument types and sounds, use your XY controllers for the effects, and even record sounds into the sampler without having the sampler selected first. In addition, certain controllers like the Ableton Push 2 will be supported with even deeper integrations. We've now learned about the Endless workflow and how it supports super fast creative music making. But you don't have to limit that to your digital audio workstation at home, you can take the Endless Workflow with you on your phone using our companion iOS app. You can download it for free from the App Store. Log in with your account and all your riffs are there. You can use it on the go or simultaneously while you're using Endless Studio. Endless on iOS supports the same super fast workflow using the retrospective looper and build-in effects. The last part of the equation is jamming with other people, live and in the moment. And while building up your own library and history of riffs is a lot of fun, what's even better is having a shared history together with other people. On the left you can find the public jams section. Here you can join public jams that anybody has access to, and that get rotated on a regular basis. And then there's my jams, the list of jams that you've joined that are either public or private. Joining a new jam is as easy as following an invite link or pasting it into this box. Or create your own jam, give it a name and then send the invite link out to your friends or followers. When you're jamming with other people, you will see how their riffs add to the same riff history as yours. Here, for example, Libby just added a new bass line. Next, Fantasia comes in with some vocal samples. Or let's say your friend Tim from London is playing his new synthesizer. You can immediately grab any effect that you want and remix the layer. And as soon as you commit the loop, the riff is added to the jam and everyone else in it receives it within seconds. Now they can hear the filtered version as well. And just moments after, Fantasia added a little bit of echo to it. And of course, jams work across platforms, so people on macOS, using Endless Studio, can jam with people on iOS. 
Another public part of the endless space is the riff feed. From any jam, whether it's solo or a group jam, you can post a riff to the riff feed. On the riff details page with a riff selected, you can either export the riff to a video file or a group of stems, or post it to the riff feed. Freely browse the riff feed and listen to what the community has created to get inspired. And in the spirit of Endless, you can also immediately remix these riffs by clicking on the remix button. This will pull the riff into your solo jam for you to tweak and remix. You can then post that riff back to the riff feed, completing the cycle. This is a great way to make new friends in the community as you can remix their riffs without having to be in the same jam system. Using the export movie button that we saw earlier, you can create a video loop that will play back the riff and send it to your friends or post it on social media. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Endless Studio. Find out more at endless.fm or check out our other videos.